WM48, we keep it real. Give me 48. Yo, what is good, everybody? You are listening to Where's My 40 Acres Podcast. Spoiler caps, Luke Cage, season two, season finale, episode 13, classic hip hop name, Troy, they reminisce over you. And that, it, you know, it's kind of necessary given who the hip hop act is this episode. And he's even doing an original Luke Cage track, which talks about the whole first and second season. What well, fucking Rakim was just killing it on stage, bro. He was just spitting. He's he like, really damn, was. Rakim still got it, dog. And I, I think I read somewhere that that was an original, too. It has to be. That's He's talking about song. Cottonmouth in it. It has to be an original. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, this was actually written by the creator of the show, Chio. And it is. Oh, the- really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it is directed by Alex Garcia Lopez. And. The the episode opens up with Harlem in I don't know like Harlem is just in mayhem and havoc. All of the crime families are trying to kill each other, and they're actually having open daylight fights in the middle of the street. It's like it's 1992 a- riots. People are robbing shops broad day. Luke has to stop a gunfight uh, to protect two girls on the street. And while all of this is going on, it's because supposedly Mariah set all of this shit in motion to make it seem like she's what Harlem needs to stop all this violence because her family has always sat at the top of the hill and she's in court talking all of this. Now, there are some people who are familiar with Glenn's in court as well. They're upset. Uh, She uses Hurricane Katrina analogies, which offends the judge. And her bail is hopefully denied. (laughs) (laughs) Along with her passport. They cut that shit in front of her like a bad credit card. Yeah, they're like, nope. She's not going anywhere, even though Luke Cage still doesn't believe that they can lock her down. But the gang violence is real and the streets are absolutely not safe. I don't know why. Because this is where she this this is where she starts talking about the reason why it's going crazy is because of of her mm-hmm. or along the lines of she can only she's the only person that can stop it. Exactly. I, yeah, I think that was I think that was legit real though. Like that their family controlling that was the one that was keeping the other family like because now the other family was just worn over this new turf. Mm-hmm. Like hey, the Stokes controlled this. And there was that uneasy balance. And now that they're gone, this is this is prime turf up for grabs. And Harlem needs a king. And that's why Luke Cage is pretty much more leaning in the direction of being that king. Because yeah, Luke looks at it like, I got to keep, like, A, Peace. they're turning Harlem to a war zone. Mm-hmm. And B, I got to go and talk to these people and just tell them, like, you can't, like, this can't happen here. Yep. I don't care what y'all do with y'all at. But it can't happen between what one twenty second and one seventy something, or one fifty something, something like that. They name numbers. I don't know numbers. I know street names. Uh, Doctor Jelani Cobb is speaking on Harlem on television and talking about Luke Cage can only protect people that are close to him. And I don't know why he took offense to that. He didn't really say anything negative about Cage. He was just keeping it real. That man can't be everywhere. Yes, true. Uh, Luke, did y'all notice that Luke Cage's hoodie is smoky from the gun battle outside? Yes. <laughs> he sat down and all you saw was just like all this smoke coming up. That's how much he did, working, man. Yeah, didn't DW say something like, man, like the streets is hot or the block is hot takes on a whole new meaning? Yes. <laughs> I actually thought that effect was pretty cool. I didn't notice that the first time I watched it when he was sitting in the chair just smoky from the gun I battle. I mean, it's it's crazy. Yeah, like the even the phones at the precinct was like ringing off the hook everywhere. Now, um, this is this this is the scene we were talking about before. Uh, Misty Knight goes to Mother's Touch to see Tilda to try to find Bushmaster because nobody has seen them or Ingrid, and their conversation basically divulges to Misty Knight saying to Tilda, "You're Harlem's Patty Hearst." 
And I actually had to go look that up because I wasn't familiar with who Patty Hearst was. And the long and short of it, I'm not to give like a full history lesson on this, but Patty Hearst was a woman who claimed to have been kidnapped. But in reality, during investigation, they found out that she was actually like a part of the whole mob shit and was involved. And I think she either like went to prison or got indicted on a bunch of shit. Either way, she wasn't the victim that she claimed to be. And that was the reason that she that Misty said that to Tilda. Tilda's playing like she's a victim, but really she's on the ends now and she has controlled some of this situation and some of these deaths are on her hands as well. She is responsible for keeping this shit in motion and mm-hmm. she's dangerous. Now we also realize that Tilda is hiding Bushmaster Ingrid in the shop and Bushmaster's head is all fucked up from taking that last full injection. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> oh my lord Mariah because her bail is denied has to go to prison or jail at the least <laughs> and what the fuck county jail is this where the security guard gets stabbed up on site like that That all of this was weird right now with the whole the stabbing and then the lady coming up to her. I forgot what she said, how she knew Mariah. I get I have all that information. I studied this episode because this shit was it, it was high. I was like, am I I said, am I tripping? No. Like I thought I was high for a minute. Like the fuck is going on? She's supposed to be in a county lockup, but clearly, yeah. clearly this is real penitentiary prison because <laughs> that poor security guard got stabbed about 50 times with them shanks. Mm-hmm. And one of the women was Jamaican and the other one was supposedly, I guess, Russian or Italian. And it came from Rosalie Carbone, who we'll see later in the episode, but we saw in the last episode bidding on the WB Du Bois book at the auction. Mm-hmm. And the woman says, Rosalie Carbone says goodbye, Mooley, which I thought was ridiculous. And I feel like the Jamaican woman beside her should have ran and shanked her in the neck. Hell yeah. I was like, bitch. What the fuck? But she had a hit put on her in prison and it was going to go ahead for the territories and the ownership and not having to deal with Mariah at all was going to just get her shanked up in prison to get her the fuck out of here completely. Fuck a trial. Fuck prison time. Just kill her. What ends up happening is two women from the Stokes family, who are a woman who was involved with the Stokes family back in the day who's been in prison. I don't know why she's been locked up in county for so long. Been in prison. <laughs> has her own little mob shit going on. And she comes after they douse Mariah with kerosene. These two women sent by Rosalie Carbone, the women from the Stokes side come up and they actually slit the throats of these two women that was set to put a hit on Mariah. And the woman that comes in now, yeah, the woman that comes in that was, that is the leader of this gang is named Sunflower or Sunflower. Yeah. She was called Sunflower back in the day when she was one of, madam mabel's girls oh okay right she goes to well she was one of uncle pete's girls and she goes by her her actual name in prison which is kalinda and kalinda is now aka dead as hell because when she walks up to talk to black mariah mariah says let me hold one of them shanks so I can carve my name in that bitch who threw kerosene on me. And when Kalinda hands her the shank, she slides that shit smoothly across her throat, taking her out, which now makes her the leader of that girl's gang. On top of killing her, though, she tells the gang that she pays for protection in full, and she's paying 100000 a year to everybody that's protecting her. And for them to get rid of the bodies tonight... And keep any of keep all of this hush hush. Yeah, they got that money. They got they got twenty a piece right there. Twenty thousand each. Too much. Yeah. I was My like, bad. She said she said they pay one hundred and fifty large a year. Yeah, one hundred fifty large a year with like and you and you get twenty right 20 now. Twenty tonight. Because she goes and she she goes to the dead security officer. She takes her phone. She calls Big Ben. She tells that nigga to go get forty thousand dollars. And bring it into the prison so she can pay these. I don't care how you got to bring it in. Yes. Tells him to bring that 40. 
let's see, uh, Luke, on the other hand, is like, I'm taking out these my families. My, well, he goes to see Rosalie Carbone himself. And this is where Luke has changed. He's been, he's been disabling people when he fights them the whole season. Now, yes, he has killed a few niggas. But generally, he gets into an actual street fight that's like not too rough. He has been downplaying his powers. And he's been letting people get licks on him that they shouldn't have gotten just so he can mm-hmm. knock them unconscious in a fight or just get them the fuck out of the way. That is not what's going on here. When he walks through Rosalie Carbone's spot, he's just breaking bones. The first dude he, he walks up on, he kicks his fucking leg in and just breaks that shit. The next person he walks up on, he's just breaking hands. Somebody runs up behind him and tries to put a bag over his head. He takes that man's arms and turns them counterclockwise on each side in breaking directions on some motherfucking, um, what's the, what's the movie? I can't even think of what the movie is where the dude puts the people in the traps and kills them. But there's you little like about, oh, it's all when saw. they do when they put the nigga in the rack. Yes, and, he straight racks that nigga's arm with turning each hand in the in the wrong direction and breaking them both on the spot. And then when he's talking to Rosalie Carbone to get his message across, he puts her head henchman on the table and breaks each one of his fingers to every word of a sentence, which is shit he doesn't do. So Rosalie Carbone, though, can still see that he's a big ass softy and will protect her before he'll kill her, it seems. Also, she wants to buy him coffee. Yeah. So there's that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she I think she was completely turned on by the fact that he was snap that he was snapping up fingers. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, oh shit. But he is a different, he is a different Luke now. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's later. That's later. So yeah, he's a uh, he is a different Luke. He is breaking bones. He is hurting people. He is not playing. He has no patience. But she wants to take him to cafe, uh, Reggio or Reggio or whatever. Basically, she wants the the Luke D. <laughs> Bushmaster goes home with a broken mind. But he's not dead. So hopefully we'll see him next season. Uh, Mariah Stokes is spending most of the rest of the episode in the visiting room. Yes. She she got like four visits. Because <laughs> what her and the lawyer had planned to do, which is what Twine was talking about, their whole plan to get her out is to kill off everybody that was affiliated with Harlem Paradise. So, mm-hmm. uh, sugar, has, sugar has been hanging with Luke, but even when Misty asks him, where has he seen sugar? Luke is like, nope. And everybody else, like the henchmen that sugar talked to before they walked into Gwen's. Everybody, everybody that was at Gwen's. That, that dude got murdered. They knew about it. Yeah. He got fucked up. Um, I want to say. That when Shades went to see Luke in the last episode, the whole reason was because two men robbed this spot, this old man's spot that he used to go get food from back in the day. And one of the guys pistol whipped him over the head and killed him. Yeah. Yeah. They were basically saying, with, you know, he was saying with shit, the way shit is going, like you said, like those, these motherfuckers ain't following the code. These motherfuckers, you know, they just doing what they want. Yeah. But then, you know, he's pretty much exiled because, you know, now he's known as a snitch. Uh, Lord, Alex tries to save his own life by Aww. going to talk to Tilda and tell Tilda to get word to Mariah to tell her to stop killing them niggas off because he's always been loyal. And Tilda's like, I can't help you. I'm sorry. And five minutes later, he I, gets shot. trying to get his internship up. Yeah, that's what he's trying to get, man. Yeah. Y'all just let that nigga die. Y'all killed this man for no reason. He got shot in the head, too. I was like, ooh. Alex with the good head died. Right in the middle of the street. Cause Sugar was the only one that got she he got pretty much saved because his wife gave Mariah clothes. Oh, when they stayed at the mm-hmm. So that's the she said that's the only person that, you know, not to touch. Is is wait, who said she, when did she say that? Well somebody said that because she did she did say that. She was saying that to um when did she say to that to Ben? Cause she said he gave. She said his wife gave me clothes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he's 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 like he's fine. That's weird. 
Okay. I thought Alex was the homie too, but I guess not. She only people... nothing but no Alex. The only person she spared the sugar. But, uh, I think it was like the clothes part and the fact that sugar won't dare. Yeah, sugar was MIA as fuck. So you it's know, like they didn't know him. nothing about the, about about like everybody else knew something about Gwen's. Yeah, she sugar, okay. Sugar gave sugar didn't know nothing about Gwen's, but sugar also put you know helped her out when you know when the shit burned down. He said, you know, my wife about your size. So, but she yeah. did say his his wife gave me clothes. Okay, so 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 let's so, so I think I think what happened was is what y'all are saying, but also the fact that they couldn't find sugar. Because if they had found Sugar, they absolutely would have killed his ass before that conversation that she had with Ben. Because I think Ben was like the only person we haven't found is Sugar. And nobody can find him. And that's when Rob was like, well, don't yeah, worry about then him. Because he, he left because they were, I think, weren't they going to Gwen's at that point? And he was like, no, nah, no. Nah, yeah, we talked about that. deal with that. Yeah. We talked about that. He, so. Yeah, he left. But he, what I'm saying is that she didn't. Yeah, he necessarily... went. He was went and work. It was working with Luke. I don't think he was. She like, was. He wasn't beating. hiding. He was with Luke in the last episode, but then he did go hiding uh, later on because Luke was by himself. What happened was Mariah. They could not find Sugar to kill Sugar. Nah, cause Sugar was going out and finding information for Luke. He was, she, she but was he out, also she was, she was staying out there out looking, sight. like looking for. Looking through his context, that whole last episode was like getting him to talk and stuff like he, that. He so I, never, I never got the feeling that Sugar was hiding. He was absolutely hiding because Misty Knight was looking for him too. And she asked, she asked Luke, had he seen Sugar? And Luke said, no. Nah, I ain't seen him. So Sugar was hiding. And Mariah did not put the hit on him. Uh, Mariah just I, I said, just don't like worry she, about it. Like, I feel like Luke was like, I'm not gonna tell you he working for me. Like he just, nah, I don't know. Man, that nigga was hiding because everybody else, in Mariah Kent was because he kept because he was walk because he kept walking. He never even looked scared. He was just walking in like yo. I check my contacts and he'll walk back out and go do the come back. We're gonna hear from these people and these people and then we come back. And Sugar know the like, game. Sugar never, Sugar never even look look stressed. Look, there's a couple of times this season Sugar was hiding. Okay, <laughs> Sugar be Sugar be dipping in and out. Okay, I don't even think he look. He don't live in Harlem. He ain't hiding. He just in Queens. We've already established. All you got to do is cross the border and you're all right. Sugar live in Queens. So he all right. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Yeah, Shades. Somebody, tr- they try to put the hit out on Shades. That doesn't work. <laughs> he ends up killing the guy. And then he uses his phone to call Ben and tells Ben, y'all hit fucked up. Get me on the visiting list to come see Mariah. So he goes to see her. They have their one little final breakup conversation. And he basically hits her with the year a gangster now. You're going to live the life of always looking over your shoulders, trying to stay alive, never trusting anyone. We could have been more than this. But you broke my heart. <laughs> and then he leaves and Mariah has a breakdown because another man has failed her. Oh, yeah. Of mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. Tilda sees that Alex has died and she's all broken. And she gets upset by this. So the next thing we see is her doing some type of conjuring up some mix. <laughs> and they show us the name of it is Beso de la Rania, which I kiss think translates spider. to, yeah, the spider kiss. Well, no, the spider kiss. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kiss it, the spider, spider kiss. I in English, it's the kiss of the spider, but I believe in Spanish it will be the spider kiss. Yeah, because there's a, there's a prominent book called The Kiss of the Spider Woman. That's a prominent book that's been out. Yeah. Uh, um something and 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 this is funny like again second time i watched it tilda tilda's dress and her look has been pretty in tune like fine-tuned this whole season right she's not she doesn't really do anything that stands out a whole lot she looks like somebody who would run a shop named mother's touch when she's she, very homely, like yeah, but I like attractive, but homely, right? Yeah, not not like bummy homely, but you know, just more she's conservative. Not, yeah, she's not ex- conservative is a good word. She's not exaggerated like her mother at all. Yeah, but when she goes to visit Mariah, all <laughs> of a sudden she got this bright ass fucking lipstick on, mm-hmm. and it's not even put on clean. It's like like some of it is missing off part of her lip. It's not on clean. And I was and, and that threw me off the first time I watched it. I was like, why the fuck she got that lipstick on, bruh? 
But then the second time I was like that this was this this absolutely was a hair a makeup choice. Like they wanted it to look off. Mm -hmm. And we come to find out that it that lipstick is poison. And the conversation that she has with her mother, they're they're just kind of talking things out. But Tilda doesn't seem to be fully invested in the conversation. Mariah, because she needs people now, is all lovey-dovey and hearty-hearty. You're my daughter. I no longer see Pete's face when I look at you. I see mine's. <laughs> and Tilda chooses her words very wisely. She says to her mother, I hope you find peace, which is something you say to somebody that is dying or dead. Yes. Even though you don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. And then she gives her a big kiss on the lips. That final mother-daughter kiss. And she leaves. And I'm not sure if Black Mariah was aware of how, of what had just happened. I don't think she was. But she knew that Tilda was doing something because she could tell that Tilda was lying. Specifically because... Uh, Tilda called her mother and she's been calling her mommy the whole season. Mm -hmm. She said, I don't think she knew that was the, she did the thing. Yeah, she did. She didn't know. Even though when Luke came to see her, she told Luke, she didn't have much time left. I didn't know why she said that if she didn't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so Tilda is her visit and she's like, you know, Tilda just lied to my face. And that's when she tells Ben to go get the will. She needs to make some adjustments. So then Luke calls up and after talking to the mob and whatever, Luke is like, I need to go see Mariah one last time to, uh, to talk to her. <laughs> yeah. So Luke goes mm. to, to goes to see her and their conversation is really is this adult talking to this child. And the child thinking he know every damn thing and that he's finally won. And her basically telling him, you've always kind of been my little toy. Kind of been my little puppy. You're my protector and I like playing with you. You're just fun. Talking shit. While this is going on, Tilda, Tilda, um, the conversation that Tilda and Mar Black Mariah had was interesting because Mariah is selling her on Harlem's paradise and how important it is. And she tells Tilda to go back to Harlem's paradise and really stand in and soak in the Stokes family achievement, right? Like what we've been mm -hmm. able to do for so long in Harlem. Right. You'll feel right at home if you go there, which is fucked up because then she goes and she changes that damn wheel. And that's exactly what Tilda does. She goes to Harlem's Paradise and she really does feel at home. She soaks mm -hmm. in the Stokes legacy. She embraces it. She sits down on Cornell's keyboard and she plays an original piece. Uh, Things and everything. Mm -hmm. Gabrielle Dennis just humming. She sings Did Tilda's song. Know? I think the song must be called Everything Must Come to an End. Remember, uh, remember earlier... Cornell told her to sing from her heart, but she said she was scared to do that because she didn't know what she would find. Mm -hmm. And now that she fully knows what she is and who she is, that she was able to finish that song. Yep. Uh, some of the bars from the song, she says, everything must come to an end. There ain't no family first. What you meant was it was you, you thirst. Yeah, so the whole song is about her mom and her hating her mother at this point. And her mother needing to die and her being the one that kills her. Mm -hmm. Mariah starts to choke and bleed and spit up blood in front of Luke during. And, and I was like, you know what? How did they not suspect that he's. I'm surprised Big Ben didn't run in and suspect that Luke Cage was responsible. Nigga, that's, I was like, OK, so this nigga going to get blamed for killing her, right? <laughs> he gets <laughs> blamed for everything else when he in the room. Why would this be any different? And And if you paid attention. They had all the cameras and shit cut off. So nobody knows what happened in that room. Mm -hmm. They could easily have said he did it. And it kind of looks like he did. He is Luke Cage. I'm sure he can make somebody spit up blood. 
But yeah, um, and before she dies, she says to Luke, uh, I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> yeah. Then R.I.P. So what we find out after her death, Luke and Tilda are called to, I think it's Harlem's Paradise, to have a conversation with Ben about the will. And in the will, I don't know why Tilda kept her face all happy until she realized what was happening. I thought she would have realized after done with, after Big Ben was done reading her half. <laughs> but essentially, the will says that Tilda gets Cornell's keyboard. And she's she's just looking, oh, she's like happy about this. And then that's it. She gets nothing else because he cuts to Luke. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says that, well, they say that all of the money the all all of Mariah's money, three hundred and something million dollars, is gonna go to the First Family Foundation. So she not even getting no money. Nope. Uh, not only Luke, that, Luke gets the deed to Harlem's Paradise, mm. and Tilda gets up and walks the fuck out, fuming because she finally fell in love with the place, and in the end, her mother was able to still fuck her over. Uh, so season three is gonna be her trying to get that shit back. Yeah, Luke Cage tells Big Ben to burn Harlow's Paradise because he doesn't want it. And what we get in juxtaposition to this is the actual conversation that Black Mariah had with Ben before she died about why she was changing the will and giving this to him. <clears throat> and essentially, she wants him to become the king. And she tells a story of how, how about the sirens and how they used to lull uh, seamen to their deaths. And basically that Harlem's Paradise will be Luke's siren and it will, he will fall to it. It will yeah, lull him in and he'll she fall was gonna, to it. She's like, I'm going to corrupt you slowly. Right. Uh, when, when Luke goes back to when Luke goes back to uh, the barbershop, y'all got to remember, Luke Cage is still homeless. When he goes back to the barbershop, <laughs> he's been homeless for 13 fucking episodes. When he goes back to the barbershop, he's talking no bad. with Sugar and DW. And he basically is saying, like, I met with Rosalie Carbone. I repaired the wall in Harlem. So none of that drug and violence shit is coming back up in here. And DW is basically like, well, this actually he says this to Mariah. My bad. He doesn't say this. To her. He says this to Mariah when he talks to her. So I I don't know why this is out of order. Um, actually, it's not out of order. I'm just jumping around while talking about this episode. Mariah says to him, "The preacher's son, even when you're ugly, you're regal." She's really pushing this whole king thing on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when she dies. She says, "We're not done," and I'm pretty sure that Alfred Riddle will be, will be returning next season as a ghost that haunts Luke <laughs> and Tilda. So that's going to oh, be interesting. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Because mm-hmm. she's going to really talk cash money. Yep. When Black Mariah Probably died. Probably haunt Shay's ass too. Say that. Say that. Well, I don't know if Shay's will come back next season. We'll see. Uh, his story, I think, wrapped up. But again, we'll see. You never know. True. Uh, Shades is in a diner chilling when Misty mm-hmm. Knight and the crew walks in. Basically tells him he's under arrest because his proffer was contingent on Mariah's conviction and you can't convict a dead person. Yeah. And she sent cops again, when she had big Ben pull that wheel shit, she sent cops codes connecting shades to the Atreus deal and the guns deal. Hmm. So that was his payback. And Misty Knight finally gets her payback for Candace. I think that's another reason that I think shades isn't coming back. Cause that wraps up the, the Misty Knight story. <laughs> With him at Candace, right? That that yeah, brings a close to me. Kind of rest her that that old story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tilda goes by Johnson when she's leaving, and she tells them the last Stokes just died at the uh the 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 funeral home, and that guy's been burying Stokes for years, and he asked her does she want to go all out, but the thing is, she ain't got no fucking money, she can't go all mm-hmm. out, and she tells him just cremate the body. And also, she don't care. Yeah, she don't care about the ashes. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm sorry, Mariah. Hmm. Somebody, DW mentioned something about uh, November 9th. 
Did anybody get that reference? Because I didn't. No. I didn't know what he was talking about. Uh uh-uh, uh. Not made, at all. He made some statement or allusion in November 9th. And um, when Luke and Sugar and all of them are talking, they think, you know, Harlem is back together and Mariah's dead and it's all cool, right? Well, DW is listening to them talk and he basically tells Luke, damn, man, you really are like Luke Corleone. Hyman Roth shit. Luke Trump. And he breaks it down to Luke and very simply, if you're going to be the boss of crime, you a crime boss. And Luke is like, DW, it's not like that. And DW is like, nah, it is, bro. And y'all got to get the fuck up out of here because this is Switzerland. Yeah. And I'm using all of the money from all the merch, all the merch stuff that I made off of your name and never gave you a dime of while you was homeless sleeping in this barber chair. (laughs) I'm going to use that money to buy this shop. And you just now I thought this was fucked up. I thought this was slander. He says, you come in, get your hair cut. But that's it. Can't talk shopping here. Got to go. <laughs> and all I kept thinking was, this nigga ain't got no hair, though. So that means he can't never come in there. <laughs> <laughs> that means mean he can't come in. <laughs> you come in. I guess it, he get a lineup of that goatee, and then he got to go. You come in, get your hair cut. Can't talk shop around here, though. Got to go. It's like, why is he talking like that? Uh, <laughs> so now Luke is really homeless. Homeless? <laughs> <laughs> And we realized he did not burn Harlem's Paradise. And he, he that's his home. Only home he got. And that he actually booked a concert for that night with Rock Hill. <laughs> Where else does he have to go to sleep? I, I actually wrote in my note, in my notes, Luke says to burn Harlem's Paradise, but takes it anyway and throws a party with Rock Hill. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. He's running it now. Oh my God. And he, and he had his little suit on and everything, you know. Yeah, he's dressed you know, up. He, Misty looks at him and she sees it and she's like, you know, I won't hesitate to take you down if, you know, if this whole allure becomes too much. And he's like, I'm counting on it. Hey, can we talk about Misty's hair in this scene, though, and why she got her hair done up like an Egyptian queen? Like rocking the crown or everything? Yeah. I think Misty's always been pretty. She's always been a pretty woman. Misty, so. Misty's hair has been the same all season. So for this mm-hmm. final episode, for her hair to be done up like an Egyptian princess, that shit was dope. She, I mean, you know, she's been working hard and she finally got the folk she needed to get. Mariah's dead. You know, she's... Shades is locked up. Shades is gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke you know, replaces. she got a new arm. What, yeah, yeah. She can ask, uh, she's the new captain, basically. Mm-hmm. She's about to be the new captain if she ain't already. And yep. uh, uh, we, st- we stated before Rock Kim's song is about Luke Cage. Uh, Luke replaces the Biggie portrait because the first thing you do when you move into Harlem's Paradise is replace the wall decor. I told you, man, you got to have a big picture ready. Ready. <laughs> Was it 24? Everybody, by everybody knows the dimensions of that wall. Everybody's got a 24 <laughs> by 36 portrait ready to go. And his is a portrait of Muhammad Ali throwing the fist because he is so corny. <laughs> that's, like, that's his portrait. I feel like there's a nigga beside Harlem's Paradise that sells big ass paintings. He made a lot of money. <laughs> like, like, he's him, him I mean, you know, they sell all kinds of things on the streets of Harlem. So yeah, him and the movers are making a whole lot of money. The portraits guy and the movers next to Harlem's Paradise make a lot of money. <laughs> and the framers. Um I, I hate that they did this, but they did it. Sugar, or one of the henchmen comes upstairs and tells Luke she's here. And they show him looking down into the crowd, but they don't show who he's looking at. And you don't know if he's talking about Tilda <laughs> or Misty Knight. Because I'm the only two women that's been here all season that we should care about besides Mariah, who is dead. Unless he's seeing her go, she ain't here. We come to find out that it's actually Claire. <laughs> and instead they, of them, They never show her. They don't show him, show her. Luke just tells Sugar, tell Claire to go home. And I was like, okay. Yeah. But why would she show up after all of this shit went down? Where was she when he needed her? (laughs) 
she was at she was with her mama mm -hmm. on the island by the ocean and the um the last scene basically is like well that's that's actually one of the last scene them zooming up in him kind of hanging the picture of muhammad ali up and them showing him and them panning out but i think for me the final shot really should have been when misty knight walks out of his office and she turns around and looks through that door and basically sees the same scenario that she has seen in this office from everybody who has been a crime boss at some point or the yeah, owner it was, of this spot. And he fits into this mold perfectly. Yeah. It was basically a call. It, it's a, it's called back to what DW said about calling him, uh, uh, Luke Corleone. Cause it's literally the exact scene from the Godfather. Mm. Okay. When the, um, if you watch The Godfather, because Michael never wanted to be in the family jump, but then he kind of gets pulled in and he starts doing it. But he has and he has a wife that he's already with who knows him like that, but she starts to see the change. And this part where she he get she gets they get an argument with someone and she gets put out of the office. And then she as the door is like she's looking at him, watching him do business, and she has that look like he's changing. And the door closed. Mm -hmm. It's like an iconic scene in God in uh in Godfather. So that's the scene that it, that they were doing. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I mean, so and just oh, you oh, you ain't talk about uh, Tilda coming back as Nightshade. Coming back as Nightshade. What do you mean? You know when Tilda came in at the end. You mean into the club? Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't see no Nightshade. No. Okay. When she comes back, that's her character. Huh? In the comics, there's a character called Nightshade or Doctor Nightshade. That is Tilda Johnson. I mean, I get that, but they don't allude to that. Yeah, she come when she comes in with their hair and those two puffs. That's the exact. Oh, that see, yeah, you gotta explain oh, really? that better. Yeah, you yeah, gotta explain that, that she better. She came bro. back. She walked in the club. She had her hair and the two puffs and two puff balls pulled in. She had that little swagger. She was walking in as nightshade. Gotcha. Okay, there you go. So you had you had explained that because I don't read Luke comics. So with yeah, so with nightshade, I'm assuming she takes nightshade. Hence, she well, she nightshade was like a, no, she she was just a in the comics. She was just like one of them. She was a doctor, but she just she was a uh, a healer for like crime bosses and stuff like that. And yeah. then she also like made different chemicals, and different stuff. So kind of what she's doing now. And she was a sometimes she was a good guy. Sometimes she was a bad guy. Um, she has some stuff with Cap and stuff like that, but that's the character they're kind of playing with. So I, I think, think she's self serving gonna... right now, like, and that makes sense because I don't see her being like a a, a physical foe. I see her being more like a manipulator, and that that's basically what she did with Bushmaster. So I assume that she would manipulate muscle to do her bidding, mm -hmm. you know, in exchange for something but always kind of like, I mean, basically doing what Black Mariah was doing, manipulating muscle and the people around her to do her biddings. That is the Stokes way. She's just going to use Nightshade to do it. So. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, she's basically, yeah, she's basically the extraordinary genius, extensive cell taught in genetics, biochemistry, cybernetics, robotics, mm -hmm. physics. So she's just a smart ass woman. Yep. That was in uh that was in the comics. Well, that'll be interesting. So next season will be Dark Luke Cage. Yep. Uh Tilda fighting to get her seat back at the table in her home. I hope that John Ivers' brain starts working again and he comes back as Bushmaster. They're gonna have to bring him back. He's just I wonder if they'll bring him back as a hero though. Huh? I wonder if they'll bring him back as a hero, though. Like to like to 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 wake Luke Cage up or to break him down and to foil Tilda. I'm wondering how they would bring him back in season three. Oh, for to be a hero to Luke Cage's darkness. There's no hero in Harlem right now. So, that's I mean that was what Luke Cage was there for, but he is basically a villain now too. Right. And then Bushmaster said Harlem is his birthright, so mm -hmm. I can definitely see that. It'll be interesting. That'd be good. Yeah. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how they do season four 
and how they just deal. I think season four definitely should focus more on Luke Cage and how he is dealing with being the kingpin of Harlem and still and somehow being Harlem's having. hero. Mm-hmm. And maybe he'll have to fight the defenders. I don't know. Maybe maybe Colleen and Daniel have to show up. Just, maybe yeah. I don't know. Maybe he'll have to have sex with Jessica to snap him out of it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he's gonna go full bad. I think he's gonna he's gonna walk the line and have some people there to be like, dude, stop. Or or look at what you with the defend defenders, like uh Daredevil is quote unquote no longer living. Well, no, yeah, he is. I thought he he went down that little hole thing. With that leg, yeah, he went. He was down there with um. Y'all didn't watch Defenders. To the lecture. I can't remember. Dang, I he's do, alive. Honestly. He's he's alive. There's a somebody nursed him back to health. He's in a spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's you alive. right. He's alive. totally right. You are totally yeah, right because he woke he's up. He's very yeah. alive. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He I just gotta not, rewatch Defenders. So he's just not there just, no more. It's at the That's end what, of the they, last. They don't episode. know. They yeah. don't know. But they he, don't yeah. know he's alive. But he somebody yeah. found him and nursed him back. He's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just him, not Electra. Just him. Yeah. Just him. Just him. Just him. So that hmm. we have to get Iron Fist season, and I, I honestly think like. This might be a good time to bring Jessica in to Luke's world. We've already seen him in hers. But mm-hmm. we'll see. Cause she gotta deal with Trish Trash first. Yeah, she got a new villain in her world. That the crazy that can play hacky on. sack. So that'll be I hate Trish. She got on my everlasting nerves. That's why I call her Trish Trash. I hate her, man. <laughs> She was whiny and like she was so jealous of of Jessica. You have all the powers, and it's like the wor- really? the girl who lost her whole family and came from it was in a house where she wasn't really accepted. Yeah, that's the one I'm jealous of. The one that was yeah. always treated like the ugly one at parties, where Trish right. was treated like the pretty one, even though she was doing stuff in the bathroom for coke. <laughs> And while, you know, you have a career and money, you can pretty much do what you want to do, but I'm jealous. Blind with a pretty face. She literally came from being on her knees in club bathrooms for Coke <laughs> to being like the star of a talk show in New mm-hmm. York on face on billboards and shit. Like her past don't exist. But she's jealous. Right. Jessica runs a struggling PI business. And is an alcoholic. <laughs> And her shower water doesn't only run twice a week. Yes. But she's jealous, of course. Mm -hmm. Can't keep a door or glass on the door. I mean, or a wall sometimes. Shit. Yeah. Always dodging death, but you know, you're jealous of that. And lost her mother twice. (laughs) Lost her mother in a car accident and then lost her mother to her basically half sister. Mm -hmm. Who just showed up and shot her mom in the Trish Trash Splish Splash. All right, y'all. <laughs> that's that's this has been our season two Luke Cage recaps. Hope y'all appreciate it. Let us know what y'all think about this season. Uh, I mean, overall, I think the season was easy, like an eight and a half out of ten. I think it was really good, much better than season yeah. one. Yeah, this one's much much better. Like, um, you know, just especially with the characters and the story and. How everything you know pans out towards the end, it's definitely much better than the first season. Yeah. And uh Luke is officially the man at the top of the hill now. So it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see how this goes. But you never know. I don't know. Twan, what do you think? Where you at with this? I I mean, I think the whole season was great. Definitely improving on the first one. Um and I think I like how they just kind of left it a little bit up in the air. So that you can sit there and like, is Luke gonna toe the line? Is Luke gonna go all the way and and do and be and be evil? I mean, I still I still don't think he's gonna do that, but it's cool that they kind of give you that. You know, you have to wonder because now it has you like you watch season two now. You're like, all right, I'm looking forward to season three. I want to see what season three is gonna talk about. 
And I know we all appreciated Luke Cage the first season, but I don't think we were all like, yeah, let's get a season two right now. Like nothing in the story left us wanting more as much as it did this one. No, I think, again, I think people should watch this season multiple times. I think it's that good. Like you'll definitely pick up on yeah. stuff you didn't pick up on the first time. Yeah, it was a lot of great acting, a lot of a lot of great performances from people in very um, subtle ways. Uh, the all the characters were nuanced. Like mm-hmm. everybody, like you would have times where you would be like, "Oh, this person is just evil," and then you'd be like, "Okay, I kind of understand where they come from," and you go back and forth. And even and even and even Luke's a little bit more nuanced. Where he was like in the first season, he was just one note, and he's a little, he's more than that now. So like overall, they did. I I think it was vast improvement, pacing wise, story wise, over the first season. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's pretty much where I'm at. So, all right, y'all. This has been a Where's My Forty Acres podcast, and this has been spoiler cap for Luke Cage season two, episode thirteen, Troy. They reminisce over you. And that's it. We did all 13 episodes. Let us know how y'all thought. Hope y'all sharing this. If you're listening to us on YouTube, please subscribe. Let us know in the comments what your favorite moment is this season. How you rank this season overall amongst all of the Marvel shows on Netflix. And uh, there was rumor that the, uh, I think the Russo brothers actually entertained bringing Luke into Infinity which he's the only person I could see them bringing into the Infinity War joint, oh, wow. but they didn't. Uh, and honestly, I think I think Thanos would have broke his whole shit, so I don't <laughs> think that would have been a good choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as far as we've seen right now, there's been no crossover. Like, half the Marvel defenders aren't missing. So, that snap of the finger mm-hmm. didn't touch the burrows. <laughs> Of course, New York is unaffected. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, I don't know what happened to Spidey then. He went with tears. All right, yo. So we'll holler. Oh, that was sad. It was. We'll holler at y'all when the next show comes. Um, hopefully we get access to Iron Fist. That we've already they've already started reaching us reaching out to us about that. So that's definitely coming this season. I think he is going to be at San Diego Comic Con hardcore. Mm. so i'm pretty sure we'll get early access to season two and given that danny Rand did not get on my nerves this season i'm actually looking forward to see how they fix his show because i like Listen, Colin Wig. he really didn't maybe because he got his hair cut i don't know what it was see wig, wig. i like colleen it doesn't matter what the last name i like colleen i like colleen so i do like colleen. i hope they fix his season because <laughs> yeah plus I, we need to find out what happened to the monks they just all disappeared yeah, he keeps alluding to it. Yeah, we don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they messed all of that up. So <laughs> we'll see how he work, how he balances his chi when that drops this season. And like we said in the last 13 of 12 episodes, if you are listening on a podcast app, Pod Podomatic, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Dog Catcher, Beyond Pod, etc the iTunes app, please make sure you're subscribed. Tell a friend, tell a foe. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can email us podcast at where's my 40 acres.com. Or you can call us 443-832-3494. Yeah. We will holler at y'all. I don't know what the next show is going to be. I think we're going to get back to doing some, uh, say yes to death or pie Avengers. We squeezed these out. This was just, I, we, we didn't expect to do this until we got access, which we did. So that was dope. Shout out to Netflix. We'll holler at y'all next time. Peace. Peace.